Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Like Citizen Jones will say, it is yet another day in the life of the world and Sunday 23rd of January in the Gregorian calendar. Welcome to another edition of your regular Sunday tonic, The Advocate, where we not only discuss societal issues, but provide cogent and verifiable solutions to the problems on a no-hold-barred basis. Today, yours sincerely is saying to our highly religious but less godly people that God is not against medical science in their attempt to deliver like the Hebrew women. Aisha Yusuf, who joins us remotely, pricks our conscience <clears throat> by asking, how large is our empathy, especially given the world of today with hunger and diseases? Our guest advocate is a war veteran, a retired colonel of the Nigerian army, Hazan Stan Labo. And as usual, he's sticking to his constituency by insisting that our war veterans deserve more than we're giving them. Or is it... Why the pigeons are refusing to fly now? Well, Connor will tell us later. Treasure in our usual self is not the one to shy away from controversies as it raised yet another topical issue. Last but not the least is Liberos. Though he's not discussing government today, but it's also in this familiar terrain, the law of DNA. He's asking who his father is. You can only hear it if you wait. We are right back soon. Like the Hebrew women. A few days ago, I read the sad story of a woman said to have lost a baby in her womb as an aftermath of prolonged troubled labor, which led to a ruptured womb and the death of the baby. The late baby was her third delivery. The two previous births were via cesarean section. But on this third one, she and, I believe, her husband were persuaded on delivering like the Hebrew women. This Hebrew women birth theory has its root in the historical account of the oppressions of the Jews by the Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. You may wish to look it up in the Bible, in Exodus chapter 1. In the sad story I was talking about, the woman labored at the altar of her church for an extended period, supported by the prayers of her pastor and the wife, so she can deliver like the Hebrew women. Eventually, when they probably sensed that it wasn't working for her, she was taken to a hospital for help. But by this time, she had ruptured her womb and lost the baby. When I first engaged on this subject matter on a social media platform, uh, some of the responses I got stunned me, including comments like, the subject matter was an attack on Christianity. This left me with a compulsion to share what I believe is the substance of that sad event again. Religious organizations do have certified midwifery services manned by experienced and trained staff. These staff have thorough understanding of the subject matter and they know exactly when to refer complicated birth cases to the next level of medical care. This is not where the problem is. The real issue is with mushroom religious organizations offering uncertified midwifery services. And they know when and at what point they should make necessary referrals in respect of pregnant women under their watch. Some keep women in troubled labor for too long, saying they must give birth like the Hebrew women. 
as a matter of publicly available information, there are much more Hebrew women per hundred that are given birth by CS than there are Nigerians. In one of the records, it showed a CS rate in Israel that is about nine times that of Nigeria. Put in another way, a Hebrew woman is nine times more likely to give birth through CS than a Nigerian woman. I do not want to debate the religion of this. I only wish to advocate that government take it seriously to ensure that religious centers offering midwifery services are certified to do so and also trained on the referral side of things so that when things are complicated, they do not delay unnecessarily. Rather, they make referrals to the appropriate medical centers while they continue to support the woman with their prayers. As for the religious leaders, I'm sure that most will agree that God is not against medical sciences. Luke was a doctor, and there are many doctors in the church. We should pray for our women in labor, but when things are complicated, we should promptly refer them up for medical help and continue to pray for them. Not every woman will give birth like the Hebrew women, maybe because they are not Hebrews. And if they don't give birth like the Hebrew women, God still loves them. Well, I want to disagree with um, <clears throat> your position on this issue as regards um, medical church treating, taking a woman who is in labor to church for prayer and then a subsequently refer her. You are not um, as, as fantastic and as this and germane as this issue you have raised. I think we are, we are trying to romanticize the issue. It is more complicated than you talked about it. It is why will somebody who is in labor be at the altar and the pastor and the wife are praying for, them, for her? This is not the church uh, uh, hospital. We're talking about the altar. I mean, that's, it's cross ignorance that's, that's and, not where to and, be. and that's irresponsibility. Not where to as far as I'm concerned, it's cross ignorance and irresponsibility. Such pastors should be arrested. And you not valuing your own life. Because your pastor, except he's a certified doctor, then you should go and deliver by the altar. But in fact, <laughs> why people go doctor, by the altar? Is the altar a delivery room? This is the thing. <laughs> Thing we it analyzed the entire perception of uh, our religiosity. Honestly. You, frankly, because uh, uh, I think, uh, was it this morning? Uh, maybe what I was, it was your article or so I read where we were talking about we've been too religious and yet Let's little go. of God in us. Yeah. Correct. Yes. I and, think and, I. And, and uh, maybe. That, that sums it up. <coughs> maybe, mm -hmm. maybe Aisha would have a, a different opinion uh, based on religion. Or based on uh, how do people say it now? <laughs> I mean, with all the learning and the, the I shall. knowledge. <laughs> For me, when it comes to issues like this, um, it, it's actually irritating. Mm. When you see the way Nigerians, you know, we carry religion on our head. Mm. We are so religious, but absolutely godless. There's no empathy. There's no, there's no love. There's no compassion in us. You just begin to wonder what kind of people are, are, are we. The same people that are talking about giving birth like the Hebrew women and all of that, when they want to commit some form, form of atrocities. They will, they, they will forget that religion. They will forget what the Bible That's says. True. They will forget what the Quran says. They will justify their behavior and do what they want to do. And most importantly also, you know, I think there needs to be some sort of uh, punishment for certain behavior. Otherwise, yeah. we we'll keep ha ha having them That's happening. The for example, there are some communities in Delta State where they will say to you, if a woman has a CS, that means she committed uh, adultery. Imagine. So as far as they're concerned, so that's it. So some of them will do anything not to go to the hospital. And yeah. the women are shamed for, for having CS. I think all of this mentality needs to stop. I have true. two children. Yes. One, is, uh, one will be 22 in March. My youngest, she's 19. God knows that if I'm to have a child today, I'm not going to go through that labor. Sure. I remember when I was having my first son, I said to the doctor, can I have a pedura? I don't want to go through this pain. I don't know why people feel that they have to suffer mm. before they will not know that they have done something. That if you don't that go through the woman. pain and yeah, everything, you are not a complete <laughs> woman. Oh, well, I don't have to be a complete <laughs> woman. 
This kind of word that people are even contracting out giving birth, people should get used to it because a lot of people are using surrogacy these days. Thanks very much, Aisha. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was just going to say, I think a lot of Nigerians <coughs> go to church because the fact that you go to church does not make you a believer. That's true. correct. Right. Right. Yeah, you're a church think, goer. Yeah, a church goer. Mm. So I think a lot of us, I will include myself now, feel the pressure to perform like the characters in the in Bible. The Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mm -hmm. know, you just yeah. want to, Pronounce you know, it. you know, you want to show that you have that level of faith that those in the Bible had. Mm. Who yeah, do and, you? And besides, Why? When, besides, when you are striving to, to, to create an impression on the public, of how Jim Jim you are. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Why actually that is not what you are. But you want the public <laughs> to see you like somebody who is it, it's godly. It's the pressure and to so perform. I, mean, uh, I, 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 I quite agree with you. I quite agree with you. But if I just come in, if you see the, the, the hypocrisy and the irony of it all, is the fact that while we tend to be so religious, you know, every day I say it, you go to the churches, you go to the mosques, you go to the traditional worship center, there are a lot of people. But why is it that in our daily life, in our nation, we don't see it? Why do we have so much corruption? Why do we have so much stealing? Why do we have so much stealing? Pause you there because we. Are... <laughs> I shall going to pause you there because we have a long way to go, and you're coming back with that empathy, uh, that line of thought mm. about empathy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nobody is saying you shouldn't have faith, um, but we are simply admonishing you to give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God. I shall you suffer. As you come in after the break, I'm going to be asking you, how large is your empathy? <laughs> 